Hi, my name is Ramini Bodipur, Senior Cloud Engineer at Netscope. And today I'm going to show you a quick demo of how Netscope addresses the growing concern around zero trust and least privilege access to ensure that only authorized users and devices have access to your applications. Netscope takes a data centric approach to cloud security by providing visibility, control, and data protection, regardless of where the application resides. We also provide malware protection capabilities to ensure that your users are protected, regardless of where they are as well. In this demo, we replaced old exhausted legacy VPN concentrators with Netscope Zero Trust Network Access. Now this has two major advantages. One is scale, as more and more users move outside the perimeter, but still require access to applications in your corporate data center or applications in AWS or Azure, legacy VPN solutions just aren't scalable. With Zero Trust Network Access, we're not limited to hardware restrictions or concurrent session limits. Netscope Private Access runs over new edge infrastructure which was purpose built to meet the demands of organizations moving direct to cloud, as well as supporting a hybrid approach where controls or data still reside on-prem. Furthermore, having to set up MPLS or site-to-site -site VPN connections and architect a robust VPN framework can be very challenging and very expensive. The second major advantage is that Zero Trust Network Access runs on the same infrastructure as Netscope's next-gen secure web gateway, which includes all the CASB, advanced DLP, and SWIG capabilities, and we can deliver this without having to deploy additional steering clients or set up user profiles for VPN access. Everything is configured and controlled in one SaaS delivered platform. In addition, we integrate with major IDP providers like Okta and Ping to provide granular access controls to applications that's gonna be based on users and groups you already have set up in your environment. We try to make it real easy to control who has access to which apps. So let's take a look at NPA to see how we can accomplish this. So there's going to be a couple of use cases we're going to demonstrate today. The first is we have a SOC analyst and he needs to have access to our SIM running in our corporate data center. He needs to have access to the Splunk Enterprise UI to be able to perform functions of his role. And he's going to be coming from off premise. So he's not going to be behind the corporate firewall. So he's going to need to have access to this application. The next use case is going to be around application admin accessing Windows Server. So we have an application administrator he needs to access the underlying Windows server that Splunk Enterprise runs on, but he needs to access it over RDP because he's not going to be at the console. He's going to be coming from a remote location connecting to that application, and he wants to be able to make some changes to the Windows server. The third use case is going to be just a standard user that's going to be accessing one of our corporate applications. In this case, we're running Jira in AWS, so he's going to need to be able to access that application when he's not inside the corporate firewall. He's going to be traveling as well. And then lastly, we have a database administrator and he needs to be able to make some updates and some changes to the Ubuntu server that runs our Jira instance in AWS. And to do that, he's gonna to need to SSH into that device. Now, all of these users can come in through various means. They can come in through public Wi-Fi, whether it's a salesperson that's accessing an application uh, while he's traveling. Um, now more and more users are working from home. And so it, he can be coming in from his home network he can be traversing to public networks as well. He can also be coming in from behind the corporate firewall, and he can also be moving outside the corporate firewall and working from home. So we need to be able to provide access to these applications for all these different types of users and all of their use cases without having to make any significant changes or profile deployments. So when we talk about the Netscope Cloud, all of these connections are going to go through our Netscope Cloud, and we're going to provide access to applications running in various locations. This is called application fanning. So application fan out, it means that we have applications running, running in one location and we have applications running in another location. And so we need to be able to provide access to those applications regardless of where they're at. So this first use case is around the SOC analyst having to access the Splunk uh, Enterprise UI. And he's gonna be doing that over HTTPS. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So I'm connected using the Netscope client. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to access the Splunk instance. And we can see here that this Splunk instance is running over uh, a private IP address. So this is running in our corporate data center. And we can see that this user is gonna have direct access now to the Splunk UI so he can perform his functions. Maybe he's doing some correlation or log correlation activities. And so now he has access to this application regardless of where he's at. And let's try that again, but we're gonna turn off the Netscope client. And now he's gonna to try to access that same application 
as you can see, he, can, he can't access that application. The reason is because we're not making inbound connections or calls to the application itself. We're making outbound calls from publishers that we deploy within these different environments. And these publishers are what controls the communication between the end user and the application. So we don't have to make any modifications to your firewall. The second use case here is around application access via RDP. So we have the administrator of the Splunk Enterprise server, and he needs to access the Windows server that enter the Splunk Enterprise runs on. So again, we're gonna try to come in here and we're gonna try to access um, the application via RDP. And we're gonna try to make that connection. And this connection is gonna time out because we don't have direct access to that application. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the Netscope client. And by the way, as I turn on and off the Netscope client, it's simply to demonstrate the ability to access the application. Um, the Netscope client is going to be enabled um, based on your security policies by default, and you probably won't allow users to disable it. Um, but just wanted to make that clear. So now we have the client enabled, and now we're going to try to come in and RDP to that Windows server again. And as you can see, instantaneously, we have access to this Windows server, which is running in our corporate data center. So we can quickly provide access to various users over various protocols um, so that they can perform certain job functions. Now let's take a look at access to our AWS environment. And so we have some standard users. We have a Jira application running in AWS, and we just want to provide them HTTP access to that Jira application. And this can be um, you know, corporate wide. This can be thousands of users, hundreds of users, tens of thousands of users and we just wanna be able to provide access to that application regardless of where they're at. So with the Netscope client turned on, you can see here that I have direct access to the private subnet within our AWS environment that runs our Jira. In this case here, it's an Ubuntu server. Um, and, and you can see that we have access to that with the client turned on. Once we disable this client, that user will no longer have access to that application. And we can see here that this is going to timeout. The last use case that we want to talk about is the ability for the a database administrator to access the Ubuntu server that's running Jira, but he wants to do it over SSH. So with the client turned off, we're going to go ahead and try to make an SSH connection. And this is going to time out. So let's go ahead and stop that. And let's go ahead now and enable the client. And we're going to try that again. This time, what we're gonna see is, we're gonna be able to access that server, which is running on a private subnet in AWS, okay? So that just shows the power of the client. Now let's take a look at how we enable this. Within our Netscope platform, all we need to do um, for this type of demonstration is to enable two different policies. And we can make this as granular as we want. The first policy is going to set the uh, allow access to the applications in AWS. In this case here, I'm running my Jira application and I'm running the Ubuntu server um, that's running Jira. We can change this and we can say, we wanna only allow uh, network administrators uh, to have access to the server, but we wanna allow everyone to have access to the Jira UI. The same goes for any applications running in my corporate data center where I have Splunk Enterprise running and I want to allow only specific SOC analysts to access the Splunk UI but I, but I don't want him to access the Windows 12 server, we can change this user or group to make it as granular as we want. But for this demonstration, we simply have two policies set up, access to applications within AWS and access to applications within our corporate data center. Now, one last thing I wanna show you, if any of these users are going directly to SaaS delivered applications like Office 365, Gmail, Salesforce, or just browsing the web, we can enforce rules without any changes to the endpoint, and we can enforce those CASB, DLP, SWIG, and IaaS policies as well. So I have a policy set up that basically says you can't go to any cloud application that's not sanctioned, and it's a coaching um, exception page. So I tried to go to Dropbox here, and we can see that I got a couple exceptions here. And what's going to happen is it's going to redirect me to Box, which is our sanctioned cloud storage application. So as you can see, I didn't change anything. The client was still running. So we can enforce private application uh, access control rules as well as granular policy controls um, through the same steering client. So as you adopt 
a hybrid approach to your IT environment by leveraging cloud resources and cloud infrastructure and moving those applications outside the perimeter, it's important to ensure that your user experience doesn't change. As you just saw, Netscope was able to provide seamless granular access control to applications over various protocols like HTTPS, SSH, RDP, and we can do it without having to deploy or craft complex VPN policies. The Netscope private access solution does not require any inbound rules or changes to the firewall uh, to allow access, as I mentioned, uh, and this allows you to maintain your existing security posture while keeping your network security and network security stack intact. Thank you for uh, watching this demo. I hope uh, this was informative and uh, look forward to talking with you soon. Have a good day.